Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition and today I'm going to show you my monthly haul for March of 2018 including some custom bound books, manga, hardcovers, trade paperbacks and omnis and even an absolute in there. So stay tuned! And the very first thing I wanted to do is give a shout out to Jimmy Owens. Thank you so much for this and the kind note that you sent me. It is my pleasure to make videos like these. Um, next up, I had a birthday and um, my very special dear friend from Spain, Simon, bought me this. This is Mobius's Blueberry. And this stuff wasn't available in America. He wrote a nice note. He's a wonderful guy. And none of this, except for four, I believe, volumes came out in America. And this is one of them. They're not very cheap. This is all in English. Now, he has the complete blueberry set in Spain. Because over there, unlike here, Mobius is huge. Now, Dark Horse has the rights to a lot of these things. But I don't know if they have the rights to Blueberry. There's three points in Blueberry's life, I think, when he becomes the sheriff of a town. And then when he's older. But anyway... I absolutely adore Mobius. I was upset and jealous that we never got any of the Blueberry comics here in America, like I said, except for four of them, and this is one of them. So thank you very much, brother. I really appreciate this. My wonderful, beautiful wife always gives me books to try out that I normally would not buy myself. So she found The Thrilling Adventures of Lovelace and Babbage. It's a based on a true story about the first computer. And I was flipping through it, I read the foreword, and pretty much it's a mix of like comic books and what looked to be essays, but mainly comic books, so I'm down with that. And she's been really hit lately, so a lot of the stuff that she's gotten for me for Christmas or my birthday, I really end up enjoying. Not going to talk much about this because Dan did an overview of this, and the reason that my wife got me this for my birthday is because of Dan's awesome overview, which is also on the channel, so check it out. Next up, I want to talk about the Lexington Comic Con that I went to. We did a video in our channel, and I ended up getting some things. My favorite place is this place right here where comics are 5 for 20, or sometimes they sell bundles, so this is the bundle of the Captain America. And I got that for 15 because I bought so many things from them. Next up is the Avengers. This is, I believe these are some of the last few issues of Avengers West Coast. This is the death, spoilers, the death of Mockingbird. But guess what? She comes back in Secret Invasion for some reason, because Bendis. Um, but yeah, this is the issue where they go to hell and Mephisto's there and Clint tries to get her back. So yeah, some of the last few issues of Avengers West Coast. And that was... That one wasn't part of the 5 for 20 bucks. This one was marked separately. I believe this one was 10 uh, And then these were all coming up 5 for 20 So we got Titan's Hunt. The lead up to DC Rebirth. This is the return of Donna Troy. And they're kind of sensing that Wally's out there as well. And just catching up on my Captain America that I haven't picked up before. Some extreme X-Men that I'm still going to do a custom bind because I'm a glutton for punishment. If you have not read this series, it is amazing. I absolutely love it. I love the fact that she has taken over the mantle of Wolverine. And, you know, X-23 wasn't one of my most favorite characters, but Laura has really grown on me. And then you also have her sidekick, Honey Badger. So that's this is an awesome series. I managed to get... All four of the Extraordinary X-Men trades. Uh, these were 5 for 20. So I was really happy to get these because I, I didn't own them. And I thought about like, ah, I'm, not, I'm done with X-Men unless they're in hardcover or whatever. But, you know, for 20, uh, I guess for $4, these, these I, I was okay buying these. They weren't the greatest stories. And Je Jeff Lemire has admitted that some of his stories were kind of messed up by editors. So he didn't really get to write the stories that he wanted to. I managed to get all four of the Cullen Bunn X-Men series. This is the series that was done by Greg Land at the beginning. And this is all right before the X-Men Gold and X-Men Blue that is out now. Some really nice artwork, though. Um... You know, Greg Land, not really, but 
the guys Piper and I think Salazar, they kind of have like an Ivan Reyes and Ken Ashley look to their artwork, but I really dig it. Let me give you some more examples of that, yeah. And actually, I think Ken Lashley does draw the annual in this issue. Yeah, this annual right here is drawn by Ken Lashley. He's one of my favorite artists and still working on X-Men Gold. And then I found volumes 1, 3, and 4, so missing 2, which I think is just the Apocalypse uh, storyline, the Apocalypse Wars. But this is all new X-Men, and I believe Bagley stuck with the series through the end. This one was, uh, this was okay. I, I did read this. This is a Dennis Hopeless series with, like I said, Mark Bagley on artwork. Just wasn't the greatest fan of this story, even though they included some of the kids from the Wolverine and the X-Men series. Just not that great of a story. And Bagley's one of those guys I really enjoy his artwork, but most of his faces and characters kind of look the same. But hey, the, the guy can crank out a monthly comic and has been doing that for over 30 years. So that's that's awesome. And like I said, all this stuff leads up to the X-Men Gold and X-Men Blue that is out right now. One last thing I did pick up from the convention is the Art of Lane. Because it was $3 and sure, why the hell not? I don't own this. I love art books. And... I mean, just look at this. For three bucks, yeah, the cover's a little damaged, but this is really cool, and it's all in English. It's translated by DMP. That's the studio that translates Berserk and a lot of the Dark Horse stuff, like uh, Helsing. So this is really wicked. I had no idea this book was around. And honestly, Japanese art books are something that I've kind of just put on the back burner because I'm focusing more on comics and more and more on comics again. But yeah, I'm also a fan of Japanese art books. And if you've never seen Lane, you need to because it's one of the weirdest and most beautiful that's drawn animation out there. Speaking of X-Men Gold and X-Men Blue, here's some in-stock orders. I have no idea why they decided to call these X-Men Gold and X-Men Blue Zero. Besides the fact that they're just probably cashing in on the name because these titles have absolutely nothing to do with those characters. Let's look at X-Men Blue. This is one of the last Joe Madureira covers for Uncanny X-Men. And I think this that's all this X-Men Blue collects is Uncanny X-Men 351 to 359, and I think some stuff from X-Men Unlimited 17. Yeah, this story. Um, so this leads up to the hunt for Professor X, and it takes place right after Operation Zero Tolerance. So I love the fact that they're giving us these books. They're pretty much giving us all of X-Men now in trade paperback or hardcover edition. So if you own the hardcover of Operation Zero Tolerance and you own the trade paperback of the hunt for Xavier, you know that there's an upcoming Magneto War trade paperback. It's about covering everything, except I think there's a lot, a couple of ish, uh, miniseries missing, such as the yeah, the, this story right here, the Bishop and Deathbird one shot. I think it's X, what was it called? X, S, no, that, they're not. X51. Ah, I cannot remember the name of that one shot. And also missing some X Men Unlimited issues. And then we have X Men Gold, which reprints X Men, adjective list, 70 through 79, I think. Yeah with some gorgeous artwork by Carlos Pacheco. Oh, and X-Men Blue did have some amazing artwork by Chris Pacheco. I didn't give him enough credit. He just recently lost his wife, which really sucks because the guy, I met him one time and he seems like such a kind, nice hearted guy. And so this collects 70 through 79 and it also collects the annual. And I think this is when they were kind of merging annuals. Oh Jesus, maggot, ugh. Um, so it has like the annual with Doctor Doom, I think. I haven't read this or, yeah, I assume it's got the Doctor Doom. I haven't read these in a few years and I haven't not read the collected edition. So I picked up some manga from the discounted damage sales at InStock Trades. Man, I have no idea what was wrong with this one. This is One Piece Volume 70, catching up on my One Piece manga. 
I can't find a dent or anything, but 50% off, heck yeah. And then I got Bleach number 65. Really need to finish out this series, even though it got really bad and the artwork kind of got less detailed as the story went on. I still, you know, treasure those moments of Bleach when it was really good. More in-stock trade orders. Here is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the IDW Collection, Volume 6. I've already gone over this, so if you want to check out an in-depth review and overview of these books, there is a video on this channel that you can go and find. Next up is Sheriff of Babylon. I believe my Omnibros, if you don't catch the show, it's Omnibros Live, are going to do a review of this, or have done a review of this recently. This is the Tom King book. I don't want to flip through too much of this. But I've enjoyed his Batman run and his vision story was awesome. So I'm really looking forward to this. I've never read any of this past the first couple of issues. So pretty excited to read that. It comes with a dust jacket. This is just your standard Vertigo hardcover. That's what the inside of the dust jacket looks like. Looks like it's just the cart artwork to volume one. And this is the Nemesis contract cable. This is the story that sets up the hellfire hunt so it's the very first joe casey and ladron work so ladron is the guy that like i said has a very kirby-ish art style and it took me a long time to get used to his work because i can see why people are put off by this stuff but i dig it and i really dig his painted artwork too much like the hellfire hunt this is a time of cable that they kind of revamped the character he is no longer hanging out with the X-Men as much as he used to. He, I think until the Age of Apocalypse, or I'm sorry, Apocalypse of 12 storyline, which doesn't happen until issue 75. But yeah, Cable's getting a lot of love this year. It's like he's going to be in a movie or something. Now we've got Batman New Gotham Volume 2. This was previously collected. Well, can't say all of it. Some of the stories were previously collected in Batman New Gotham. The original printing but this one collects 755 to 765 and superman 168 all written by greg rucka when he was first starting out on the book let me show you some of the artwork in here i really like the use of colors during this time it was really cool and i've only read these in the original trade paperback these new trade paperbacks have better quality paper and the binding is tighter, so they don't fall apart quite so easy. So I'm really digging what DC is doing with these books. I hope we get more, because I know he wrote all the way into Batman Fugitive and Batman Murderer. Or Bruce Wayne Murderer, sorry. Yeah, really digging those colors. More epics. This is the Avengers, the Bob Harris years. And the uh, beginning, I think the beginning of the Steve Epting stuff. It's, I know this collects a lot of annuals. I haven't had a chance to look through here. And yeah, there's that crossover annuals. I think there's a five-part crossover. So this collects a lot of stuff like Incredible Hulk and probably Namor and Doctor Strange. It's the Subterranean Wars crossover. So it has that and it also collects Avengers 3, 34 to 344 and annual number 20. But I think it also collects, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, the Ron Lim story here. The Death Trap, which features an early appearance of Venom. Well, an early appearance of Venom outside of the Spider-Man books. I really dug this story. I thought this was really good. But yeah, I love the epic format of books. So as long as Marvel keeps releasing them, I will keep on buying them. That looks to be some Andy Kubert. Yeah, that's some early Andy Kubert artwork there. If you want to see more of an in-depth view and overview of these Transformer books, I just recently did a video on the channel. So just look back and check that out. Here is Donald Duck, The Lost Peg Leg Mine, by Carl Barks. I believe this is volume 18 of the Carl Barks era. Long before Uncle Scrooge had his own comic book, he appeared in Donald Duck comics. So there he is. Let's check out what this actually is just to make sure here's all the books that are currently released there are some others too uh yep it is volume 18 here is wolverine epic collection this i think is volume 13 yeah volume 13 collecting wolverine 150 to 158 annual 99 and wolverine origin one through six so it's got the mini series with the origin of wolverine it's got rob liefeld on art 
Steve Scrooge doing the storyline. I think not just Rob Liefeld, but also Ian Churchill with that crossover with Deadpool. And there is what I thought was a damn good story with beautiful artwork by Andy Kubert. This is Wolverine Origin. Retelling the origin of Wolverine. Well, retelling for the first time the origin of Wolverine and who he really was. And this is where James Howlett came from and all these things. So if you haven't read this, this is a damn great series. I thought it was by Joe Quesada, um, Paul Jenkins, Andy Kubert, and Eisenhoff on the colors. Look at those gorgeous colors. And I'm still a sucker for that Rob Liefeld stuff. I know some people hate it, but... I still kind of dig it. Brings out the 90s kid in me when I was 11 and 12, and I really dug that stuff. Now we've got Avengers Omnibus Volume 3. This is the Silver Age stuff. And this collects Avengers 59 through 88. I swear, the Silver Age Avengers books are some of the thinnest collections I've seen. Here's the cover. Let's see what the book looks like without the dust jacket. No painted art or anything. Now... There is the original cover, but I went with the Alan Davis cover, too. There's a, I'm sorry, there's a direct market. So this all takes place before the Kree Scroll War. I'm not sure why they couldn't include it. That's what I was complaining about earlier. I think the Kree Scroll War started in Avengers 89. So we've got three Omnis. I'm st still not up to issue 100. Let me show you more of those pictures. And I think this also collects an issue of Incredible Hulk. I think it's 140 and Marvel Super Heroes number 17. Some early John Buscema artwork before he was on Conan, before he had that sketchier art style. I've always been a big fan of Buscema, even his brother Sal. But yeah, John was the man. He's, he draws one of my favorite Wolverines. Much like the other Omnis, here's the extras, the Revengers. I thought Thor Ragnarok came up with that. Apparently not. Here is some original artwork, unused art. Kind of know what to expect when you get an omnibus. So, yeah, here's standard pieces of extra artwork in the back. Pretty wicked. Recoloring of some original Avengers pages. And the Alan Davis cover that you have in the front. And here is Absolute Wildcats. This beautiful edition that I only got because of the oversized Jim Lee artwork, which features a new Jim Lee cover. Here's the front and the back. There's Maul, Grifter, Voodoo. I'm not gonna lie, these stories were kind of lame to me when I. Oh, that's interesting. The inside of the book doesn't have a dust jacket, so this is the art that you get. I hated the story of Wildcats when I was growing up, but God, I could not leave Jim Lee behind. I mean, he was the guy that was behind X-Men, like some of my favorite X-Men stories. So I had to follow him, and I followed him the image. And here I am, collecting Wildcats in absolute format. This wasn't a cheap book. This was $125. I mean, granted, it was 50% off in in-stock trades, but it's still a pretty pricey book. But I think my buddy Geo from A Week in Geekdom told me the best thing ever, which is, uh, just look at it this way. You bought yourself an overpriced art book that happens to have some words, which is true. And this is the Mark Silvestri crossover. But it does feature a story with uh, Huntsman, which is the Chris Claremont stories. This is what it has. It has an introduction by Brandon Choi, which was Jim Lee's friend. I think he was a lawyer that ended up writing them the stories the wildcats one through four and i think it collects one through 13. yeah one through 13 issue number 50 and then just random issues that jim lee did there's the introduction mr grifter and as i mentioned i love jim lee i mean the guy can draw anything and despite of what some people think, I think the guy's still an amazing artist. Now, this is really cool. I've never seen this done because I don't have the Promethea absolutes. But this is really awesome. That is a four-page spread in absolute format. That is huge. And they included all the pages, mainly in the crossover with the Cyber Force. So, 
That is freaking wicked. And that's what really Image was known for. Their widescreen kind of artwork. If you want a more in-depth look at this, you can look at my buddy's YouTube channel, Gabe Infinity Watch. Man, that is freaking beautiful. Yeah, I'm sure the story makes no damn sense, but hey, that's some gorgeous artwork. I am a man of my word, and I said I would not pick up any DC omnibus or trade paperbacks or hardcovers before Crisis on Infinite Earths, because that's where my DC universe began. However, I was always interested in the character of Kamandi. I'm going to show you this while I talk about it. This is the spine on the back. Um... And I had this pre-order from Amazon for $37. The inside of what it looks like. Just oversized Jack Kirby artwork. But they canceled that pre-order because they resolicited the book. So I said, well, if I can call Amazon and get them to sell me the book for $37 instead of, I think, their discount, even the discounted price was $80, I will go ahead and buy it. And that's what happened. I called Amazon, stayed on the phone with them for 20 minutes, and kind of haggled with them about the price, saying it's the exact same book, the exact same page count. Can you honor that price? And they finally let me talk to a manager that honored the price. So that's why I ended up with a book. Like I said, I don't really collect a lot of this stuff pre-Crisis on Infinite Earths. That's why I also don't own the Fourth World Omnibus. But I've always been interested in the character and the story of Kamandi, mainly because of that cover. So I guess covers still work on me. All right, let's look at these custom bound books here. We've got Wonder Woman by William Messner Loeb's, and the guy's going through some really hard chips right now. But these were done by Kurt Kiefer. I ended up passing on them a while back when he moved to Japan, and I ended up getting them when he messaged me through Facebook asking me if I wanted to buy them because these unfortunately have never been collected other than the trade paperback that has the Mike Del Tato Jr. artwork. But this is every story. This follows right after the George Perez run. And like I said, these are custom bound. They're DFAB because I know that's what Kirk likes to use. And let's just flip through here. See, he's had these for a while. These are original issues. He didn't gather any of these from trade paperbacks. It's a little bit yellowing to the pages, but I'm okay with that. If you've never read any of William Messner Loeb's run, I highly suggest it because he is an awesome storyteller. So this was happening at the time that Hyal Jordan went crazy and became the Parallax. So Emerald Twilight was going on. Where pretty much all the heroes in DC were just falling for some reason. Yeah, let's look at the other one while I talk about that. Um, you had Batman's back was broken. Aquaman lost his hand. Superman died. Hal Jordan went crazy. And eventually, there's a character that appears in this book, Artemis. This is the Mike Del Tato Jr. stuff. That beats Wonder Woman in the trials to become Wonder Woman. So she becomes the new Wonder Woman, leaving our Wonder Woman, Diana, to just be a chick in hot pants and spandex. Which I actually love that costume. Maybe it's the 90s in me. So he also included the Hawkman stuff. Again, this is Kurt Kiefer's. I believe this is back when he was doing. They did a little bit of a table of contents. What's all included in here. And this all leads up to issue 100. Which after this series is when John Byrne takes over. He even included the Artemis Requiem stories in here. So really gorgeous stuff. You know who Kirk is. You know that his stuff is A+. And... Custom binding is just one of the things he loves to do. It's one of the things I love to do, which I know I know I need to get back on it and do my Superman post death and return books. Last but certainly not least, shout out to my friend Steph who got me this for my birthday. This is the Game of Thrones pop figure, the Night King and the spoilers. I see Viserion. Let's get the sucker open and see what it looks like. Trusting eye. Let's cut away. comes out technically you could leave him out like that all right there's Viserion and I assume he just rides on top there that's adorable so thank you Steph okay I lied Night King was not the only figure that I got for my birthday I also got this for my brother Tommy this is the 
awesome, awesome two pack of Thor and Hulk from Thor Ragnarok. I really love the expression on their faces. You can see. There you go. Yeah, these are awesome. And that is everything I picked up for the month of March. Pretty excited about some books coming out in April. I would love to know what you guys are excited to pick up this month coming up and what you picked up in March. Please don't forget to leave a comment down below. If this is your first time watching the channel and you liked what you saw, please don't forget to hit that like button. And if you really want to, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please don't forget to subscribe. We also have a weekly show that comes out every Thursday, except this time it's coming out on Saturday. So again, this was Omar. Thank you very much for watching the show. Have a spectacular day.